Hi everyone, Ethan here from Extreme RC 4x4, and today I'm just gonna be telling you guys about a couple modifications I've made to the Team Associated CR12 uh, Trail Series truck, uh, even before I've even uh, taken this truck out on the trail. So, uh, if you watched the unboxing video and you saw me driving it, uh, you might have seen that I either look like a terrible driver or this remote was really jerky so anyways this remote um, it seems it is very jerky like I was saying uh, in reverse it is very difficult uh, really difficult to get it to go slow so it goes pretty quick and in forward it was also kind of difficult to control so I went ahead and swapped this old Axial remote into here, if you guys know, before Axial started using the Tactic remotes, uh, they used these. And this came off of our poncho ready to run. But this remote makes this truck so much nicer to drive. If I were buying one of these trucks, uh, have a spare remote, even any cheap remote, just this thing does not seem to be doing very well. I'm surprised that they sold this remote with this truck because it's really difficult to crawl with it. You'd have to turn the throttle drive really low. That's what I was doing to get it to, uh, to crawl like that on camera. But with this remote, throttle drive at 100%, I can crawl pretty easily with it, but I can also get full speed out of it. So. I would highly recommend swapping a different remote into it even if you do go and look for a used axial remote just like this. Uh, it seemed to be a huge upgrade. I was not going to take this thing out on the rocks and get it all scratched up because the remote was jerky. So that was just my opinion. Um, I did put the mirrors on. The uh, striping here, this two-tone color, is a sticker that's put on here and there's a hole inside of you can kind of see the hole behind this sticker but uh, they didn't cut the hole out for you so you just got to take a body reamer or a knife and just poke through the sticker and then you can shove the mirror in and it's just retained by some little like rubber circles I guess you just press onto it you can see on the where the mirror comes through and the door handle the second thing I've done uh, in modifications of this truck, uh, as you can see, I do have this whole electronics tray out. And uh, a lot of people were talking about how the front steering servo was really far forward. And I agree to that too. It's actually so far forward that the geometry, um, I was having this issue. I wasn't gonna change it at first, but once I found out that when you're going in a reverse, and you're, you have the wheels full lock, I believe, uh, this way. If you have the wheels full lock that way, the, well, I'm not really sure. But one of the ways that you turn the wheels full lock in your reverse, uh, the steering servo cannot break that free unless you stop. Then it can recenter the wheels and turn the other direction. But the geometry issue was that the steering servo uh, right here when it was trying to push the steering knuckles back this way the steering arm was so far forward that it was really just pushing against the axle housing so it wasn't uh, necessarily a servo issue but how far forward it was because it just pushed it against the axle rather than pushing it this direction it was pushing that way so uh, under load it could not break that free now as you can see here it does not come with this big shiny aluminum plate in here's factory but what I've done is basically replicated the entire plate that we have here as well as added a servo mount on front now, I will need to make some modifications uh, on my design for this servo mount up here as I did have to do a few things by hand, but other than that, it seemed to work out really well. The servo is really moved back only probably a fraction of an inch because these plates here sit on the chassis right about here. So the servo would be forward just slightly 
but uh, originally the big servo saver that we have on here would bottom out on our steering linkage at full compression. Let's see, this is gonna be hard to show. So here's our servo saver. This would originally bottom out on this link here, but now the servo saver is between, uh, let me take this wheel off. So as I was saying, originally the uh, servo saver here would bottom out on this big steering link here, but now I have it moved back so that servo saver really barely touches anything. So. Uh, the shocks actually bottom out before anything else because I think the shock shafts are too long for these shocks because they won't compress all the way. But it's really close to bottoming out those shocks, if not bottoming them out. And we still have perfect clearance on our steering link and everything. So really for the first design, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I can't believe it. But... um I'm really hoping that these modifications are gonna help me out on the trail. I think it steers 10 times better now, and I'm just glad to have this weird mounting system out of the front of this thing. They basically have these L brackets that mount to the side of the frame, and rather than tapping, uh, tapping this piece here where the servo goes in, they set these uh, steering servo mount blocks on top of that they get screwed into and on top of that they don't have an actual chassis brace for this they just put one of these on both sides so it really wasn't uh the most well thought out piece ever on that front steering servo but um it is nice that if you use a full size one tenth scale servo so that if you do want to change it out in the future you can um, I might change it out, but I have not driven this truck yet, so we will see. I did drive around inside for a while, though, to find that steering problem. But now, I'm just going to double side tape everything back where it goes. The battery is already right where it needs to be. And I did countersink uh, some holes in here for where the heads of the screws go. Which I also found odd on this factory battery tray is they have these the countersinks on them but they use button head screws for these and then the actual flatheads I just kind of sunk a square in there because I don't know how to do that we might have a bit that can do it but I'm not sure so I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this up probably take it out on the trail for a short video and just see how well it performs but anyways, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you like these modifications. Let me know if you think there's anything else that I should try to improve right away. But other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.